we want to look at the uh, interesting problem. It's, it's a totally imaginary problem of having the Earth having a hole completely through the Earth, you know, like a well going through the center all the way out to the other side, and dropping a mass into that well and calculating how long it takes to uh, fall through the Earth's center to the other side. So we're calling this fall through Earth's center. So here we have a sketch of the Earth. Here's a well all the way through the Earth. We're going to measure distance from the center of the Earth with a small r, and the radius of the Earth is r. We're going to drop a mass, small m, through, through a hole, have it go through the Earth, and what we want to find out is how long does it take to pass through the Earth. So you dr drop it here, how long does it take for somebody to see it on the other side? Again, this is a completely imaginary problem. There's no air resistance going to be involved in this uh, example, in this calculation. There's no rotation factors to worry about. You could sort of imaginary get, imagine getting rid of some rotation effects by having this imaginary well from the North Pole to the South Pole. And we're also going to assume that the density of the Earth is constant. So if you looked at density as a function of distance from the center, remember we're using the small r to measure from the center. We start out the center, distance zero, go out to the surface, distance r, and the, what we're saying is that the density all the way through is a constant. So the density of the Earth, we could write it as m, the mass of the Earth, divided by 4 thirds pi r cubed, the volume of the Earth. So it's the mass per unit volume. And some of the parameters that we'll, we'll need to get a numerical value, we need the radius of the Earth, 6,371 kilometers. We'll, of course, convert that to meters. It's the radius of the Earth. The mass of the Earth is almost 6 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And we'll need the gravitational constant, 6.674 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. I do believe I got that number right. Um, so here we are, similar sketch. Our mass has fallen down to this point here. And at that point, you need to recognize that the only gravitational force on that mass, that small mass m, is coming from the mass in a sphere of radius small r. So although the mass of the Earth is constant, we need to find the mass as a function of r. We need to find the mass contained in a sphere of radius r. And the way we would do that is we would say this mass that we're looking for would be the density times the volume of the sphere of radius r. And uh, again, the density of the Earth, we're taking that to be a constant. So, take some of this out. So we need to find this M of R. And as we said down there, it's going to be the density of the Earth. And we gave an expression for the density of the Earth. So our rho is M over 4 thirds pi R cubed. And the volume of the sphere of radius r is going to be 4 thirds pi small r cubed. So if we work this out, 
we're going to wind up with m over r cubed small r cubed and you can see the units work out all right so we have our small mass going through the earth so we need to think of Newton's universal law of gravitation we have the mass of the earth the small mass that we're dealing with so Newton's law uh, universal law of gravitation will be the gravitational constant times the product of those two masses and I'm going to write the mass that we're interested in here as the one we just wrote down and that's over small r squared so what we can do now is we can say this force is equal to the gravitational constant times the small mass and we're going to substitute in what we have for m of r so the m of r is going to be capital M over r cubed times little r cubed so that's this quantity here and then we have 1 over r squared so this works out to be the gravitational constant times the mass the little mass we're dealing with mass of the earth over r cubed times little r so this is the force on the r mass small m at some distance r from the center of the earth uh, we know Newton's law f equals ma that's our small mass now so that is also m dr squared dt squared right the acceleration you can write it that way and what we're going to do now is we're going to set this equal to that but we have to be careful because the the, the distance r is measured upward and the force is downward so we have to include a minus sign so I want to emphasize that by showing the minus sign in red and then we'll have g gravitational constant small mass big mass over r cubed times r now we can uh, rewrite that that would then be small we'll cancel out the small m so we get rid of the small m this is on both sides here and here so that goes away so we'll have simply the second derivative of position with respect to time plus we're bringing this quantity to the other side so we'll have g capital m over r cubed times little r and that is equal to zero so what we have here now is an ordinary differential equation, right? ODE, ordinary differential equation. There's a number of ways to solve this, but the easiest way to solve it is to recall things that you learned when you solved elementary differential equations. And so I'll write down what I hope is a familiar form for you. So this is the second derivative of y with respect to time plus omega zero squared with this times y equals zero. And the y double prime represents the second derivative of the position with respect to time. This coefficient is this is omega zero and the y is the r. So what we have now is uh, the similarity between these two equations and omega is the angular frequency so we can say that our, our omega sub zero here is equal to the square root of gm over 
r cubed. I think I'm missing a 2 pi. Omega 0, will, yeah, it'll be, it'll be the square root of that, and that is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, which is equal to 2 pi times the period. <clears throat> so what we have here with this uh, equation, what we can think of here is we, we have the full oscillating case. You drop the mass, say, at the North Pole, it falls all the way through the Earth, comes out the South Pole, and comes back up. That's the whole period T. The T that we're interested in is one half that, that time. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Oops, wait a minute. This is a mistake. The, the frequency is one over the period. So if we solve for the period now, what do we get? We're going to get... 2 pi times the square root of r cubed over g m. And that is the full cycle. That's, that's starting at the top, going all the way through the earth, and coming back up. So the time that we're interested in is actually one half of that time. So we could say the time that we're interested in is one half the uh, time corresponding to this period. So if we put these parameters in and work this out, we would find that this works out to approximately... Uh, Two five three zero oh, seconds, which is approximately forty three minutes. So the time it takes for the mass to fall through the well all the way through the Earth, starting at the North Pole, winding up at the South Pole, is forty three minutes. But there's a lot more interesting part of this story that we want to talk about. Let's see, what do we need? We need... I'm going to uh, rewrite the equation we have for that full period. And I'm going to take the 2 pi into the square root. So. The equivalent is the square root of 4 pi squared r cubed r cubed over gm all under the square root. <clears throat> now what I want to do is uh, recall Kepler's uh, third law. What we're going to do, we're going to find out that here's the Earth, and if we had a satellite just skimming across the surface of the Earth, something you can't do, but you can imagine it. The period of that satellite would be approximately uh, that 84 minutes that we had for the entire uh, period that we calculate from, from this uh, expression. So Kepler's third law says the period squared is proportional to the uh, semi-major axis of the orbit cubed. So normally when you think of uh, Kepler's law, you have an ellipse, you have the semi-major axis, and the period squared will be proportional to that semi-major axis cubed. 
if you actually write it all out, it's equal to 4 pi over g times m plus little m. And so let's say we have a planet going around little mass m, and we have a sun at the center, capital M. But what we're, we're going to do is we're going to look at the capital M as being um, our uh, satellite. So our period squared here is going to be uh, eventually our t. We'll take the square root. So we take the square root and the a is going to go to our r. So if we do this we're going to wind up and our small mass is so small compared to the Earth's mass. We're looking at the case now of the satellite going around the Earth skimming the Earth's surface, so the, in other words, the diameter of the orbit is practically the same as the diameter of the Earth skimming right along the surface. Can't be done, but it's interesting to think about it. So the period would be uh, the square root of 4 pi over g m and now we're replacing the A by the radius of the Earth, R, and it's uh, cubed. And we take the square root of that. So that would tell us that this satellite going around the Earth, satellite period, skimming Earth, would be precisely what we found for the time to fall through the Earth and back up, approximately 84 minutes, if you put in the numbers. And you can see this expression from Kepler's law. So here's the Kepler. And here's what we had originally. And you can see they're equal. 4 pi over gmr cubed. Oh, 4 pi squared. I forgot, yeah, 4 pi squared. 4 pi squared r cubed over gm. 4 pi squared gm r cubed. Now we just barely have time. Whenever you do a problem like that, it's always good if you can have a good guess. So we're going to make a, we're going to make an approximation. Normally when you think of uh, something falling, you think of g as being 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's suppose that uh, this is the acceleration at the surface. At the center of the Earth, what would the acceleration be? It would be zero. So let's put surface here, and then we would have at the center, it would be equal to zero. So we could come up with an average acceleration due to gravity. And we could say that is going to be one-half the regular g, gs. So now we could say the distance, s is equal to one-half at squared, right? So we have one-half the acceleration would be one-half gs, and then the time uh, squared. The time here would be equal to one half what we called tau earlier. So I'm almost out of time. Um, this would be the distance from, say, the North Pole to the center of the Earth, R. And we would have one fourth the regular G that we think of. And then we'd have this squared, that would be one-fourth tau squared. Substituting this t in. Let me clean that up a little bit. One-fourth tau squared. So we can solve for the tau. The tau would be equal to uh, the square root 
of of 16 over g times r so that would be the square root of 16 over 9.8 um, meters per second squared times the radius which we had was uh, what, what was that radius? That radius was 6 six three seven one times ten to the three meters so if you work that out what do you get you get approximately thirty two hundred seconds and if you recall we so this is the approximate one and the and what we found when we worked it out uh, it was five thousand six hundred and thirty uh, no it was we'd be half of that so that would be two thousand five hundred and thirty seconds so you can see this quick estimate here actually works out it's well within an order of, of magnitude and there's an old saying you should never do a calculation unless you already know the answer well, that sounds kind of weird but it is often good to work out at least a crude answer first and that's just what we did here to find out a number that we can keep in our head and then when we do the actual calculation we can compare the two and you can see the agreement here gives us confidence the simple calculation what you might call a back of the envelope compared to the full blown co uh, computation so here's the earth we imagine the hole through the earth you drop a mass here it'll appear here after uh, 42 minutes or 2530 seconds and that's what we wanted to find